If you have your Bible, we're going to have a scripture reading right now. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 4. Go ahead and if you want to flip there. I don't know if we've got it on the board or not, but no worries. I get to speak it. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Today, we have a guest with us today, and I, you know, I call him a guest. I doesn't do justice for whom this man is. This man is a partner with us. We've partnered with his church in Aradia, Romania, for years, and the impact that our mission teams have had in Aradia, and the impact that the the mission trip has had on us has been exponential. Uh, this is a man who keeps pouring oil into jars. He's a church planter. He's the head of the Pentecostal Society of Romania, and he has lived his entire life following what God has put on his heart, touching hearts not only there, but in churches that are in London, in churches that are throughout Europe, even in churches that are being planted here in the States, all in the name of God. So church family, I'd like you to welcome my friend. Uh, John, how could you do this to me? My friend, fellow pastor, and believer in God, my brother, John Bogdan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ray. I think most of the speakers who came to speak to you from this mic uh, begin with the expression like this, I'm so glad, I'm so happy. Yeah, it's uh, professional to, to try to catch the people what you speak for. Uh, Sometimes it's just expression. have to say something when you begin. I don't know, but I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Uh, from 15 years when God opened our hearts on to others, uh, I saw our relation grows, grows, and even many things change here in Green Valley, many things happen in Romania have been changed. Uh, we remain and our relation became strong and stronger. I'm so happy to be here again. Thank you very much. You accept me to be part in your family church. I feel that. Every time when I came, even I came through Freeway 1 or to 152, you know, I know all the ways to your... <laughs> when I get the corner from Main Street to Green Valley, I see like, like my village, like my city, like... Uh, when I came here and I saw the, the flags here, I know some of them are Romanian flags. When you see red, yellow, and blue, that is Romanian flag. I know part of my heart, part of our nation is here in your heart, in your church. Thank you very much. I want to have some appreciation as a beginning. First, again, I'm really impressed from the young people who has a worship, lead the worship there. <laughs> Guys, I'll talk with the bosses for your trip in Romania. I like to have you there. Uh, second one, I'm so happy to, to see my old friends here. Uh, but in the same way, I'm so happy to see new faces here. This is the sign of the health of the church. 
You know what's happened in a primary church in book of Acts, first chapter, when stood all together in the same place, God worked to change something there. And you know what's happened? Lord sent persecution and obligate them to go. Sometimes God used economical situation, but he developed his plan and had us to go, to go, to go in Mexico, to go in Romania, to go wherever. It's very important. Uh, I'm joy to see all of you, and I bless you all in the name of the Lord. Well, I am so, so sorry, and I, I tried to change something in my schedule. I will be not here for 17th of May. I, I, I write, feel the smell of barbecue. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I hope Pastor Dennis will, will see on a video what happened this morning here and give me a chance to say he right now, happy birthday, Dennis. I love you like all your church loves you. Romanians love you. God bless you, Pastor Dennis. Uh, yeah, many things, many greetings from Romania. Um, from Tabor Church, for my colleagues, Romanian Pentecostal denomination, Romanian Pentecostal missionary, all of them greet you in the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm so happy to, to go with good news from here. In next weeks, Ryan and a group from, somebody remember Bruce, Bruce Chia, Bruce tried to organize a group from all some churches, what we are in connection, and we'll we pray to have a good time in Romania for next uh, month. We'll be there. Um, all the time when I came here, I tried to have a good uh, report for uh, about what is happening in our ministry in Romania. I want to assure you, we continue to preach the gospel, we continue to evangelize, we continue to plant the churches, we continue to build a sanctuaries for churches. Right now, we have three churches in construction. But for this morning, I want to introduce two specific projects. Um, one of them is uh, about Viorel Pasca from Dumbrava. The people who visit us from many times, I'm sure, remember him. Viorel is the guy who planted a church in Dumbrava. It's a nice church there. And uh, let the go the pictures, please. Uh, and uh, yeah, it probably is not so good. But so something uh, happened years ago, uh, 12 years ago, I think, when fr from TV he get the news, two people dead, two homeless, dead, frozen in a street in Orada. Then God touched his heart and his wife's heart, Florica, and said, I change my plan for ministry. And he led the church for other brother, and uh, he began to bring his, his house homeless. People uh, really uh, great uh, need and difficulties. And he began in his house, he had another room, he remodeled the barn for cows and made room, he remodeled the barn for chicken, he made room for people, he remodeled the doggy house and made room for people. <laughs> and he had, he had, uh, and when that was full, he, be, he bought other property, God provided for him all resources, and right now, he has uh, seven houses who accommodate 160 people. He feed them people. All of them no income. Most of them, probably half of them, sick, very sick, especially with mental problems. Most of them, no identity. Uh, he tried to help them. Uh, oh, every week he has about three funerals <laughs> service. Uh, but he gave a chance for these old people and unhelpful people. Uh, he asked me to help. And in this trip in States, this is one of my purpose, to try to help him. He really do a great job. Uh, I, I'm happy, Ryan. Uh, for sure, one of the uh, point in your visit will be to Viorel in Dumbrava. I, I know Bruce knows him very, very well, and uh, uh, he have most of this information. Uh, if you find the fine sto uh, fun story, uh, uh, there you'll find uh, one one lady without identity died, 
and uh, you know it's difficult to uh, make the funeral if the papers are not ready. The police came and tried to find who was the people who that. And uh, this take three or four days, and I asked him, where you keep? Because we don't have in Romanian like here, funeral, home, refrigerator, blah. And I asked him, where you keep the body? Oh, in her room. And where was the other ladies from that room? In their rooms. They stayed together. Oh, he told me, was much better than before because she was a difficult lady. <laughs> but now, it's, you will find a lot of funny stories there. I know here it's a business to take care of adult. I, Romanian family are involved here in this kind of business, but you have to understand the economical situation there. And Vurel really done a good job. The second project, it's about music. Uh, the people who visit Romania, you know, Romania has, are a very musical nation. Uh, well, uh, you know, we have very long services. Every Sunday morning, three hours. Every Sunday night, two hours over a week. And of course, we need to fill the, the service with something. We have a choir, we have a youth choir, we have orchestra, we have a brass band. Thank you, Mary. Is here? Uh, uh, she she helped and uh, of course a lot of music, a lot of songs by the way uh, tune back please, that picture with the saxophone and accordion there it's if you remember last year when I have been here I, I ask you really Dr. Cast call for me here to, to be helped, my colleague Gabi, the guy who played the saxophone, he was in difficult economical situation, he sold his saxophone. And when I came here, I tried to help him to buy other one. You helped me. You helped me, and I thank you very much. I was able to buy a very good Yamaha saxophone, and I, we had very good winter traveling in a evangelism, uh, in a different kind of meeting, serving the Lord. Thank you, and I appreciate so much. Now, what I, the project is to try to recuperate our world uh, Romanian songs. You know, in a communist time, the church don't have the, didn't have the possibility to print the books, to, to uh, organize their work, because uh, the, the uh, communists uh, keep in the uh, limit the church. And, you know, we use a lot of copy books to, to keep our songs. Uh, um, and uh, we use copy books even to, to have a scripture with us. Not everybody was, uh, has a Bible like we have in all the hotel rooms, uh, Bible from Gideon. And now it's different in Romania. Uh, and what I want to do is try to collect these songs. Now we have over 2,000. I check uh, probably 100 pounds copy books from all the villages where I travel. I find the old Pentecostal, old Christians, and ask to, to give them to try to collect, to put together. It's a large project. I work, myself, I work in this one for probably uh, 10 years. And I hope this year we go to print and to make a good collection. Uh, you know, we use a lot of your songs, probably three or four songs, what your band singing this morning, uh, we use that. Uh, I hope the time will come when we translate in English our songs for you. Will will be very interesting. Most of them came directly for Holy Spirit inspiration in the night of prayers, and you'll be happy to 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 see how rich uh, words, how rich message are in these songs. Thank you, thank you. Let me to share with you. Thank you. Uh, you led me to preach. Well, I know, I'm sure not easy for you to listen to me when I preach, but belief is more difficult for me. <laughs> we are one one. We have this scripture from the second book of Kings, chapter 4, about the oil multiply. And I want to share you as a beginning and to confess 
where and how I receive the message what God gave for me this morning. Was here in States, in that period when the economical problem began here, I saw a lot of difficult situation, especially in Romanian community. You know, as immigrants, Romanians came here very hungry and tried to invest a lot in uh, buying properties, invest, invest, getting a lot of credits from the bank to try to grow in short time very much. And when the economical problem came, uh, most of them lost a lot, lost everything. I have a story about one of my friends, I know him, uh, who lost 12 houses, 12 properties, and for two, three years he lived in a, a pickup truck, in a trailer, in a trailer, with three kids, three children, and a family. Lot of stories, that, that touched me. I was in a trip in one Sunday between two churches. I was tired, sick, and I got in a parking. And because I have little time, I check what is the next service where I have to go next Sunday in Romanian. I, I need to preach exactly from this scripture. I tell you this because you have to understand my spirit. Uh, because when we read this scripture, of course we say one miracle. And this is when we look from outside. You know, it's one of miracles what God done through his uh, man, prophet, Elisha. The guy who has so brave to ask from the Lord the double portion of power, uh, what his master, his professor, the prophet Elijah had. And you know, God promised him, when, if you see the manti, Elijah Manti coming down when he will go to heaven, you will receive double portion of power. And if we read the scripture, you will see the number of miracles what God done through Elisha. It's two times more uh, than God done to Elijah. It's very interesting. Now, from outside, this is a miracle. But move a little bit inside of the problem and try to think how was there the situation. May we image you have a discussion with this widow, with this lady, uh, let's say a few weeks, few months later, after this thing happened. And with Pentecostal enthusiasm, you, you, you say that her, uh, oh, you are that lady with the oil, please tell me how, how happened the miracle. How do you think she react? I don't think she could be so enthusiastic like us, oh, the miracle. Probably she say with sad face something like, for you was a miracle. For me was one of the most difficult period in my life. May we image, it's, we talk here about young family, and I will explain why. Uh, the husband just dead. We don't know why. Accident, sick, short time, he passed away. And remain a widow with two children. After funeral, very short time, the offi bank officer came to their gate and say, dear lady, I understand your situation. Uh, I'm sorry for what happened, but I want to inform you, just before that, your husband get the credit for our bank. And he guarantee his credit with your children. Now, what I want to say, all the credit what we get, we guarantee with our family life, our children. Now, they say, again, very polite, next week we'll be back. Could be good to have money. If not, I will take your children to be slave, we read in the scripture, scripture but probably to, for organ transplant, you know. We have to recuperate our money. May you think, may you image what was in that lady's heart? How was her feeling? What I want to share with you in this morning, looking at this story, it's how are we facing the trials of the life? When the trials come in our life, how could be our reaction? What we have to do? 
And here, I want to talk about three things. First one, the faith is preparing for trials. The faith is preparing for tribulations. Uh, you, most of you know me. I'm not pessimistic guy. I'm not negativistic guy. Even I am Romania. Uh, somebody told me I am too happy. But I like to be realistic. Even we lack or not, the trials one time come in our lives. I know only three kinds of people in this world. The people who have been in trial, the people who are in a problem now, and the people who will be in trials. I know only three kinds of families in this, in this world. Families who was in a problem, families who are in a problem, family who will be in a problem. I don't know if you like what I say now. I know only three kinds of churches in this world. Well, the churches is the same. Was problem, are problem, or to be problem. If we like or not, one day the trial, the suffering, the problem will come to our gate. The question is, how we prepare for that moment? Let's take a lesson from this family, from this widow. When this wife cried to Elisha, she said these words, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Your servant respect the Lord. Your servant, my husband, love the Lord. The most important things what we can do, preparing for the trial, it's to choose to fire the Lord. I look in the Bible to find the scripture who support this affirmation. I find a lot. Of course, book of Psalms, book of Proverbs. That by, I find special one in New Testament. Uh, the words of specially woman from New Testament. Jesus' mother, Mary. In her song, in Luke chapter 1, she has a few absolutely great words. Let me read verse 49 and 50 from Luke chapter 1, from the song, Mary's song, where the scriptures say this, For he who is mighty, he has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. For who is his mercy? For who is God's protection? For the people who fear the Lord. Oh God, help us to be this kind of people. People who take serious the relationship with God. People who are serious in, in how they re related to the Lord. It's very important to fear the Lord. The second one, it's this family not only respect the Lord, it was a family who served the Lord. You know, I, I turn back at the first verse from our scripture, when the Bible present the situation, say, the wife of the son of the prophets, and the lady, when cried to Elisha, say, my husband, your servant. Uh, was a family who was in preparing for ministry the Lord. One of the son of prophets, probably one of the students in the school of prophets of Elisha. You know about that. Uh, and this guy, this man, understand exactly who, what was his place in the ministry. He accept the leadership of Elisha because his wife told about him, uh, your servant. Your servant who was ready to serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in a trials time, our attitude about serving the Lord is very important. Now, the Bible says uh, God has a contability of our hire. Praise God. With me, Ryan, and Peter is very easy. Uh, <laughs> but not only with our hire, he has exactly contability. The Bible said he count our step. In this world, how much we made for him. Not our step only. 
he count our ga gas gallons, how much we spend for him. Oh, he has exactly contability for how much we give from our money for his ministry, how much time we give for him. Please choose to serve the Lord. Oh, not only for eternity uh, blessing, what God will give us, but even for our life here. Now, uh, some of you knows more close me. Uh, my father, that when he was quite young, 50 some years, when he died, we remained five brothers and sisters, five children. Uh, no one married. My younger brother was 10 years old. In the communist time, was absolutely difficult. Really, we didn't know yet why he, my father, died. He had the surgery on the head, and they told us it was a tumor, but because the uh, secret communist police, he was beaten, and probably from there he, he had a problem, and he did. And it uh, was difficult, was difficult. But I saw the Lord protection even in trial. And believe me, I still feel the fire of prayer of brothers from sisters and uh, from our church in my village. I feel the fire here in, my, in the back of my head uh, because my father was a servant of the Lord in that village. And I remember if I saw churches pray in a praying, then I saw uh, like never. It's important to serve the Lord. Yeah, for mom, trial moment, it's important Hey, guys, serve the Lord. Amen. Do that with all your passion, with all your power, brothers and sisters. More or probably no more important, we say, or I'm simple, serve the Lord. I don't know what God called you. Next year, we organize a group from here. No, we don't need Bruce to organize us. So. <laughs> well, come to serve the Lord. Go to serve the Lord. Do everything for the Lord. Third, this family prepare for trial, helping others, investing in others. And probably you ask me where you know from, from the Bible, from the text and context. When Elisha talked with her and tried to find a solution for family, had a very, very interesting question. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Tell me. And she was very little negativistic. We don't have just, just a jar. And then Elijah told her something very interesting. Go to borrow jars. Go to borrow vessels from your neighbors, from your street. Go to your neighborhood and borrow vessels, jars, because I have to work in your house. Now it's all very easy, because in our time, uh, it's easy to find vessels, to find jars. But in a time when these things happen, the situation was absolutely different. Even when I was a child, I don't know how was the level in America, but in our area, especially, uh, the vessels from the village was like a community property. When we have a party, like a wedding or funeral, the vessels go from house to house together to be used from the community. As a children, we go to, to bring uh, uh, vessels from uh, houses and put together. And I remember, and we know, the red pot with uh, uh, blue wear on a handle, it belonged to M M Lady Maria. The blue one with the red wire on a handle belonged to other lady. Every, everyone has a sign to know where to go back with, you know. All the plates have been painted on the back. Blue X belong to one family. Red X belong to the other family. And you have to do this because you have to know where to go back. 
I spoke about this in Romanian church here, and a, a guy came to me at the end of the service, say, you didn't spoke nothing about uh, uh, fork or spoons, because even that uh, has a sign made, a uh, knur made by Hexho on a handle, to, to know, three sign there, four, you know, everything belonged to the community. Even now we have a villages in Romania where the families, to show their uh, richness and uh, they are rich people, they put all the vessels on a fence in the front of the house or in a tree in the front of the house, especially in the houses where they, they have uh, young ladies to be married. You know, it's important to see. They are a serious family. They are interesting. It's, uh, yeah, that, that, that it's happened. I should go to show you. Uh, yeah, this. And uh, in a time when these uh, things have been happened, uh, was more difficult. Probably, the, the, the vessels, the pot, could be the, the most rich object, most important, most expensive object in the house, in the, the house. Because the family, you know, has a, just a place to sleep, a little roof under stone, or I don't know, made by wood, and a jar. When Elijah, uh, Elisha sent this lady, uh, wasn't so easy to go, but I'm sure she received because she gave before. She gave before. Uh, it's very important to invest in people because in a trial time, God returned to you. Uh, one Sunday morning years ago, I gone to church and the lady, my generation, uh, we know quite well, uh, wake me there in the gate of the church and without good morning, uh, nothing, she told me directly, I'm so angry. For three weeks I have been in hospital and nobody visit me. Now as a pastor, when we heard this, we tried to excuse, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And really I didn't know. Or we tried to fix the situation. But what is your problem? Maybe pray now for, but in that morning, I don't know what's happened, I was not absolutely uninspired. And my answer for her was, probably you didn't visit nobody too. <laughs> she blocked. She entered in a church, and all the service stay under balcony, very angry, looking to her. <laughs> and at the finish of service, she came to me and said, I, I was so upset when you told me that words in the morning. If we hadn't people around me, I beat you. Well, <laughs> nice. But I gone in a church, and I, I try to remember, yes, I am in Oradea from 30 years, and only one person that I visit in hospital was my mother. You know, it's a verse in Obadia, verse 15. What you made for others, the others made for you. Uh, it's, it's very important to invest in others. Oh, we was in a situation where, when we asked the church from the pulpit, please don't go to visit that brother or that sister in hospital because, you know, in Romania, when we go to hospital to somebody, we give them juice, fruits, uh, coffee, blah, blah. I don't know if that's happened here. Uh, and I told them, don't give more because he opened a business with fruits in, in hospital, in juice. Uh, uh, well, it's true. If you invest in others, also will come to help you. This family prepare for trials, doing this thing. Fear the Lord, serving the Lord, investing in others. Second lesson from this scripture. The faith it's fighting in trials. Well, many people, when the trials come, they lost their heart. They are able to do absolutely bad things. Uh, years ago, one of our former prime ministers, Adriano Stasi, had been arrested. When the police gone to him to arrest him because corruption, he get a gun and was in the point to, to kill him. And you have your actors and you have your 
Very high people, very young. When the trials come, they get supra dose and medical and are able to do absolutely bad things. The faith don't do that. Faint, faith is fighting. Choice to fighting. Well, the, this family situation was, was absolutely disparate. May I think again, widow with two children and the that man ready to get the children, absolutely desperate, but they chose to fight. How they fight? First, well, let me tell this story. Uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, this gentleman, his name is Daniel Siladje, began to come in our church. Uh, both his legs are amputated. One and uh, he was in difficulty, and still he is in difficult situation. Uh, of course, as a pastor, we, have, we are very happy when somebody visit the church, but we like to have businessmen, if it's possible, or people. Uh. Oh, we are happy for him, too. And I was really enjoy when, after a few months, he came to me asking to be baptized. Oh, I say, praise God, work. We, we was nice with him, and now he wants to be baptized. But I refused him for two or three times because, you know, in Romanian in evangelical movement, the rules are very strictly when we talk about smoking, good alcohol, or don't talk about drugs or other. And he had the problem, smoking. He couldn't let the cigarettes. I talked with him, and after that he came, and very seriously he told me, pastors, uh, I was a bad man. And then I find he lost both legs for stupidity. Uh, he drunk, he slept outside, and the legs frozen. And the doctor amputated that. And, uh, but he said, I, even I was so bad man, uh, I was very active. Uh, all the time I do so uh, something. Now, when I begin to come to your church, uh, I, I began to read the Bible. I, three, I read the Bible three times till now. They, they, they made me to feel humble. And he said, yes, I'm smoking, but I need occupation. Give me something to work. Now, for work, you need a good people. I asked with some businessmen, may you? No. And I get him to our mission society office, in a, we have a small printing shop. I like to see him, how he walk in hands, in the corner where the wheelchair is not going. <laughs> Every day, couple of times, he have to walk in hands to fourth level in his block because no elevator, and uh, there his apartment, his house, and he walk in hand every day. Coming to work, coming to church. I love him. He chose to fight. The other people, little bad situation, collapse. But he chose to fight. Let's see how this family fight when the tribulation came in their house. First, she was looking for the man of God. She gone to Elisha, Kesha. If the trials go Tomorrow in your house. What is the first phone number what you call? Do you have a man of God who is ready to cry with you? Who is ready to pray for you? Who is ready to feel with you? Not to tell everybody you know what is in his or her house. Know what's happened. No, the man of God. Do you have one? This widow knows where to go. Oh, not necessary to be a pastor. Somebody. Do you have a man of God? If not, ask you why. It's very important. Second one, Bible said, uh, we just read there, uh, Elisha asked her what you have at home. And her answer, answer was very interesting. We don't have nothing at home except we have something. We have a jar of oil. What I want to say, God, don't begin to work in your situation if you don't give him all what you have. 
They think to few of Bible miracles. For example, the other prophets, Elijah, when he gone in a other widow's house, and she had little white flour and little oil in a jar. And through Elijah, God told her, do first for me. Question, what do you think? God wasn't able to feed Elijah and that family if that uh, widow don't give the white flour and oil? <laughs> Our God is so powerful. He just say in heaven. Do you remember at the Tiberiada Sea when Jesus was in the middle of 5,000 hungry people and uh, Andrew came and say, oh, it's here a little boy with some breads and few fish. Nothing for what we have here. Again, question. What do you think? Uh, Jesus couldn't solve the problem with that bread and fish? He's God from God. His power is unlimited. He's saying what's happened. But God began to work. But you give what you have. Your fish, your whale, your little flower. When you gave that, God began to work. It's one of the rules of the Bible. It's very interesting. She brought all her resources. She brought all her resources. Second, it's two times in the scripture, and please check home. First, Elisha asked her, go home and shut the door behind you. And the Bible said, when the widow's gone home, shut the door behind her and her children. Uh, especially when I talk about family problems, I use very much this, uh, this spirit, this idea. I ask, when, especially when we talk about relationship in a family, may you shut the door behind you? May you go in your house and solve there the problem? Now I understand the situation, but may you close the door behind you and cover there the problem? It's interesting, and this is for leadership. Yeah, sorry, I share with my English is not expressed, but uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. And the other things, it's she involved all the family. It's interesting picture here. When they are in the house, the lady get take a jar of oil. I, I told you, uh, Bible told here about the young family. In my mind is, if one of the boys could be teenager, let's say 14 years, probably he get the jar. But the children wasn't able. The lady take, get a jar, and the children just push the vessels to help her. And oil flew, flew, flew. All the jars have been full. He's here on other important things. When the lady asked the boys, do you have one more jar? And he said, no. And the jar stopped. The oil stopped to flow. My understanding here is, dear pastors, we have great God. He's able to fill all the jars, but he don't let to flow on the floor. Our God, no waste. He fills everything. You are hungry here. If you have one more from the oil, it's able to fill all your needs, but never let to flow on the floor. No waste. I, I, I told this thinking what's happened in a uh, charismatic Pentecostal uh, movement now. Now, there are so many preachers, pastors, who, who made miracle just. He healed everybody. He blew one time and everybody. Sorry, I'm Romanian. Probably my understanding is different. We have a generous God. I believe in power of God. Uh, with other brothers, we pray for sick people, and they came to confess. God touched them. I believe in the power of God, but I don't believe in a waste. For people who get the coffee every morning, morning with Peter the Apostle, and yeah, now. The spirit of scripture is different. Do you remember when Jesus had been in a uh, face-to-face with Herod? 
Herod, the king of Jews, in the last night, in the last day when he went Jews. The Bible said in Luke, uh, uh, Herod, expectation was to see him made miracle. You remember? Does he saw something? No. Jesus never made show. He healed. When the needed people cried to him, Jesus, son of David, be mercy with me. Jesus react, but not for show, because he loves the people. Amen. Understand the people needs. Understand? Third lesson, first one, the faith is preparing for trial. Second lesson, it's faith fighting in a trial. The third lesson is faith teach is learning from trials. The story is end with verse 7. And verse 7 is very important. When the pots was full, all the jar fulls, probably as we think, well, now it's okay. Now it's my job to solve the problem. But this lady don't think in this way. Know what she done? Verse 7 say, then she came and told the man of God. Bible is not, not very explicit here, and, but I'm sure she say thank you. Big problem for many people. All the time we like to receive, 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 but so difficult to say thank you. But this lady gone back. Oh, when so all the vessels full, they say, shut, shut the door one more time. And gone to Elisha and say thank you. And told him what's, what have been happened. And here, Elisha, the prophets, gave the, the highest economical political class what I saw sometime. As a profession, I, am, I study engineering, uh, technical mentality, maths, etc. Uh, I study just a little bit managing and uh, uh, economical. But here, Elisha teach one of the higher class in economy. You saw, I like to have the verse, I don't know what translation, verse 7. It's in three points, it's his lesson. Go sell the oil, first one. Second one, pay your dates. And third one, with the rest. What remains is for you and for your family, and you live with. If the world, not America only, has the economical problem years ago, was because our politicians, our businessmen, didn't read this portion of scripture. Uh, you know the mentality, West mentality, who came in, in my nation too, it's exactly vice versa. First, live. Uh, well, if you make $2,000 per month, any problem, spend four. Okay? No, pay your dates. I, you know, when Romanians emigrate here and feel all the possibility in America, they, they lost the balance. I, I, I met one with 20 credit cards. And I asked him, what do you do with? Oh, I pay from one to other. No? No pay the dates, make more dates. And don't sell the oil. Buy more properties. Buy, buy, buy. Understand? But I'm sorry, it's not here, Brother Nelson. Probably he, he'll be more able to teach in this. And the businessman, really businessman, yeah. I let the politician and businessman to talk about this. May you help me with the keyboard a little bit. Ben, probably you find a good song after. I like to finish with a story. It's a story about one old peasant, farmer, peasant, it's correct. One day his donkey fell into a dry well near his house. He was his best friend. With this donkey, he made all the work around the house. Go with children at school. Desperate, he called his neighbors to help him to get out 
from there. But after many hours, hours of hard work, they realized really really they could never take it out. So the old farmer told them, if you are here, please sell me, cover the pit with dirt from the garden because I cannot hear him day after day suffering there in a well. And they started to work. They took the well burrow, the shawls, and they started to carry earth from the garden. Late night, when they think thought the pit is almost full, suddenly the donkey jumped out. What happened? In fact, after each shoal of dirt, would stand down and stand on it with each lot of dirt, the donkey will be higher and higher until he got out. He scared, he pushed the world out. I know I'm in States. I know I'm California, the place in the world and probably half of population in the world like to live. I know here it's a heaven on the earth. I know here people don't have problem. <laughs> but probably for somebody is my message in this morning. Probably this morning find somebody in a dry well, in a pit. One of the great prophecies about Jesus is Isaiah chapter 33, 53. You know that. And you know how begin Isaiah 53? Who knows the arm of the Lord? This is the Jesus presentation. Like arm of God. Arm were ready to pick up from the dry well. On the pit. I understand this morning one of my friends, Brother Steve, is in hospital in a very difficult situation. It's in a pit. Probably the others are in the same situation. I like to invite Pastor Peter to, or Ryan to, to challenge us to prayer. I pray, Lord, touch you, lift you, and put you in a stone. Amen. That is the challenge, that we will turn our heart truly back to God, that we will seek him through prayer. And I know there's many times where I know I should be praying and I don't. And that is the hardest thing when I realize I should have been. So stand with me today. And let's pray together. Hallelujah. Father, we are so grateful for your love for your mercy. Father, we're grateful for the blessings that you give us even when we don't notice them, Father God. We're so thankful that you brought us together as a family to worship here, Father God. We're grateful for the word that we get to share today and the inspiration that it puts in our hearts. Father, today we pray for those that need your help, Father God. We pray for Ben, Father God. We ask that you just touch him, Father God. You give him peace. You give him comfort. Father, I pray for Brother Bogdan as he travels, Father God, that you continue to inspire him. You continue to guide him as he teaches, Father God, as he releases his young people to plant churches worldwide, Father God, that you just provide him with those to replace those that leave, Father God, to, to spread your ministry, Father. And Lord, I think of all of those within our church who are battling, whether it be with an illness, whether it be with a need, whether it be with a, an addiction, whether it be the struggles of life, that we focus our hearts, our minds back on who you are. And we focus on what you are asking us to do. That, Lord, through the trials, through the tribulations, that we grow 
closer to you. That we obey what your word says, Father God. And that we seek your guidance. Not just when we need you. Not just when it's necessary. But daily, Father God. Multiple times throughout the day. That we continue to center our lives on you, Father. That we let you be our guide. Be our comfort. And be our strength. So, Father, today, stir within our hearts that we focus on that. That we worship you the way we need to worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you for the word that was shared. And we thank you for one another. Let the love flow freely. Let us honor one another. And, Father, let us continue to do your will in our lives. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today in our streaming of our service and our message. We're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God. Have a great day.